It seems the evacuation is coming to a crescendo and people know it. 21,000 flown out in the past 24 hours and with no intention of extending the airlift, the clock is ticking because rescuing refugees will soon have to give way to removing troops. The Taliban are now in the driving seat. A smooth withdrawal will require their cooperation. Without it, the last few days could get very dangerous. This isn't really a decision by the United States. This is a decision by the Taliban. Uh, the reality is that the dates uh, are relatively fixed by the fact that we can't trust this organization um, to make a deal and stick to it. And so we have to assume that the dates that were pre-agreed, as it were, that the, uh, the, the, the only ones that they've so far uh, stuck to are, um, are at least going to abide. So in the coming days, the number of evacuees boarding the military transports will taper off to be replaced by troops and equipment that has to be flown out. So what about those left behind, particularly the Afghans? The G7 today called on the Taliban to allow those who want to leave to do so after the 31st. For many, that could mean a journey to Pakistan on their way to other places of asylum. Everyone should do whatever they can to ensure that those who want to leave are allowed to leave and the task of leaving is made easy for them. So I can assure you from Pakistan's own history um, that Pakistan will do whatever it can to enable them, uh, you know, safe passage. But for that to happen, people will have to be allowed to take routes out. And a Taliban spokesman today said they opposed more Afghans leaving. Allowing them to do so will be the first test of new rules of the game. Will Afghanistan's new rulers live up to the pledges in last year's Doha peace deal of forming a broadly based government? And others they've made since to offer amnesty to those who fought them and respect women's rights. There are key elements there. The first, of course, is uh, that they don't abuse women and girls. And very sadly, we already know that that is being violated, as we know that 12-year-olds are being forced to marry Taliban fighters in various parts of the country. So we, you know, we, we already know that some of this is in violation of, of uh, what we would consider, in fact, what almost everybody would consider uh, accepted norms of behaviour. And regionally, there are those who argue that the new Afghan rulers must be held to their promises, starting with power sharing. If it is going to be purely Taliban, no one, I believe, including my own country, will recognise it, right? So if they're able to get a country, you know, a, 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 a system whereby other very antagonistic to the Taliban uh, groups are also represented, women are represented. Uh, so you have the liberals and the conservatives and the mixture. And yes, maybe, you know, tilted towards more Taliban uh, supported people. Um, then uh, should the world immediately jump to recognize? I would say the world should see if they're able to walk the talk. Okay, their talk hasn't been that bad. Uh, their talk hasn't been that bad at all. But we have the realities of history to guide us. With the days running down until the end of the airlift, the first test for the Taliban will come at Kabul's airport. In their hour of victory, the insurgents are being asked not to make their vanquished foes exit too awkward. Mark Urban. Well, I'm joined now by Sir William Patey, former British ambassador to Afghanistan, Graham Allison, director of the Belfast Centre at Harvard University, and Hasina Zayed, who fled Afghanistan just seven or eight days ago on a British evacuation flight last week and is now in quarantine hotel in Birmingham. We did ask the UK government for a spokesperson, but they declined. But before we speak to our guests, we're going to hear from Joseph Biden, who spoke in the last half hour. This is what he had to say. The longer we stay, starting with the acute and growing risk of an attack by a terrorist group known as ISIS-K, an ISIS affiliate in Afghanistan, which is a sworn enemy of the Taliban as well. Every day we're on the ground is another day we know that ISIS-K is seeking to target the airport and attack both U.S. and allied forces and innocent civilians. 
Well, thank you all for joining uh, Newsnight tonight. Um, we did ask the government to take part in this conversation, but nobody was available. Um, so, William Patey, uh, does the West have any real leverage over the Taliban now? I mean, can they now impact on the way that they want to run Afghanistan? Very little leverage. Uh, most of that leverage was uh, negotiated away with the Doha agreement in February 2020 by the Trump administration when they agreed to withdraw troops without any guarantees about future political settlement in Afghanistan or any uh, guarantees about uh, future uh, Taliban behaviour. So the Taliban have all the cards. There is some leverage in that uh, development assistance, uh, the $9 billion of Afghan reserves are frozen in, a, in New York. Uh, development assistance will only be forthcoming if, uh, if the Taliban meet certain red lines that the, the, the West have set. But it depends on whether the Taliban are pragmatic or not, or whether they want to have a prosperous uh, Afghanistan, which is different from the one they, got, they ran in the late 90s. And, and to, of course, that is why they don't want the brain drain. They want the nurses, the doctors, the teachers and so forth to stay. But what are their biggest problems as you see it? Well, their biggest problems are they're inheriting a country that's very different from the one they took over in, uh, in the mid-90s. Uh, mid uh, we've had 20 years of uh, girls' education and of education generally, so the population of Afghanistan is much more literate than it was uh, 20 years ago. There is a functioning economy, there are hospitals, there are schools, uh, uh, 38 million people mm. who need to provide, be able to provide for themselves and their families. And without an economy, without trade with its neighbours, without its engagement with the international community, the Taliban are going to struggle to provide uh, a reasonable living for most Afghans. And if they're unable to do that, we can expect, they can expect considerable unrest in the future. Um, uh, Graham Allison, um, I, I, I'll talk to you about the future of Afghanistan in a moment, but can I just talk to you about uh, Joe Biden? Has Joe Biden created a divide with the rest of the G7 that will actually be pretty hard to repair? Well, in short, yes. Uh, basically, President Biden believes that whenever the U.S. leaves Afghanistan, whether 10 years ago or 9 years ago or 10 years in the future, Afghanistan will revert to the Taliban. Mm -hmm. That's a hard fact. I believe that fact is correct. So his willingness to uh, take political responsibility for accepting the fact that the greatest fighting force the world has ever seen lost the war uh, with its British allies in Afghanistan and that now the Taliban will rule Afghanistan in their same brutal way, more or less, that they did before. So, so you don't that's see. A, so that's you a heavy burden. But you, you don't uh, agree with Sir William Patey's an, uh, analysis that they can't rule Afghanistan in the same way because they've got a whole new generation who've lived a whole new different life. Well, no, I do agree with him. I think it's a very different country. I think it'll be much more challenging. But I think to imagine that the Taliban have changed their stripes seems to me to be highly unlikely. The better bet is that they'll look like the Taliban we know and loved before. They'll be as cruel as they were before. But that's unfortunately the reality of Afghanistan today. And I think for President Biden, the willingness to take responsibility for finally ending a windless war, rather than just kicking the can down the road, was a real act of political courage. Has he actually, though, weakened the West when you think of future foreign policy, where the future areas of influence are? Has he weakened the West? I think he's actually, when we, once we get over the kerfuffle here and all of the hysterics, he will have seen to be seen to have right. strengthened the U.S. and strengthened the West if we're sensible. Basically, we were putting... We were, Having dug ourselves into a hole, we had kept digging for 20 years. And basically, once you stop digging and recover your mind, you may be able to focus on the things that matter more. And then, unfortunately, horrible as it will be for the well-being of Afghans, there are many things that matter more to the U.S. and the West than the human rights of Afghans. 
Um, Asina Syed, I'm sure you don't think this is all the kerfuffle and hysterics. How wonderful, um, you know, what you're hearing from people in Afghanistan, particularly in Kabul, but in other areas tonight. Um, everybody is in a panic. I think this announcement shouldn't be happen because uh, right now, if you see every day, if somebody, you two or three people die, I'm so scared that tomorrow six and 10 people will die because everybody wants to get out because the future is very uncertain in Afghanistan. But give me your assessment from what you've heard, just for example, from what you've heard from uh, the former British ambassador, Sir William Patey, about the difference. I mean, you've been in Afghanistan for all these years. You know how different it actually is. And a lot of the young Taliban will be different. They've grown up with a different education and so forth. Uh, what is your assessment of what the Taliban will do next? Um, I just say that I'm hoping that they should fulfill their promises, the things which they have promised for the international community, for America, for United Kingdom. They should um, fulfill their promises. And Haz Mullah Zaif has said in his interview that he's, uh, we, we will have a woman's rights and human rights, all those things. So let's see. And time will tell, are they going to stand in their promises or not? However, now we heard tonight, we heard a spokesman of the Taliban saying that women are being told to stay at home for their own safety. Well, that's a very simple thing to say, but it actually is, is freighted you know, with a lot of jeopardy. If women are being told to stay at home now, what happens to these women tomorrow, the next week, the next week? Um, I think everybody will 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 get out from Afghanistan. Most of the people, most of the women who's un, uh, who are educated. I think Taliban has to accept the reality. Uh, what's the, uh, that Afghanistan has changed a lot. Afghanistan is not the same as they used to be, and they have to accept the reality. If they really want to develop their country, if they want to stay in uh, in Afghanistan and rule Afghanistan, they have to uh, to go through whatever we are right now and they uh, if they need because afghan if they want to be in afghanistan and work in afghanistan they need some financial support and international community i urge that they have to get together and be uh, and 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 really push a strong uh, support for uh, for afghanistan so in in the way that so they can women rights they can push more forward but of course, you, you know, the reason the Taliban don't want all the, uh, you know, Afghans to leave either with Afghan passports, because apparently I understand the Americans are letting them out with Afghan passports. The British are saying they need the visas is because the Taliban knows it needs doctors, nurses, engineers, administrators, teachers. They need to find a way to keep people in the country and not in a, in a, in a state of imprisonment of, of almost in their own country. So presumably they have to reach out in some way. Exactly. So that's uh, I think that's why they are beginning to stricter uh, to make a stricter statement right now. But uh, but uh, still because of their past experience, so people are getting a bit scared more that why they are giving those hard statement. But that's uh, that's um, um, uh, yeah that uh, that is the true st statement. And whatever they are thinking, I hope it should be the same way as they are saying to the world that we need those doctors and those engineers that's that's a valid point now so William Peter you talk about the fact there's nine billion dollars in a New York bank but the truth is if the Taliban want to strip women of every freedom they've had over the last 20 years there's actually nothing the West can do about it not very much uh, we have limited leverage uh, that leverage would be used to deny the development of the Afghan people. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we will see a flood of humanitarian assistance. I, th I think that will be unconditional. That's part of, that's part of who we are. Uh, we're not going to make humanitarian assistance conditional on anything the Taliban do. But the Taliban, we just don't know. Uh, that's that's the issue. We this Taliban, we just don't know. They're, they're with the Shura Council, we've got many of them are young men who've been. Uh, in cahoots with Al Qaeda, some of them have been in Guantanamo Bay. They have got a different outlook. They may be even more extreme than the old guys. We just don't know. Well, that's uh, so. Therefore, Graham Allison, uh, the the U.S. president, has got to accept that the risk of terrorists coming out of Afghanistan to hit targets out of Afghanistan has now increased, has it not? I think that it's likely that it's been a small increase, and it will certainly 
uh, President Biden has taken the political responsibility for any increased risk that Afghanistan is the source of another 9-11 attack on mm -hmm. the U.S. or somewhere on the West. So therefore, the counterterrorism uh, campaign that's been conducted against al-Qaeda and other terrorists, not just in Afghanistan, but in Pakistan and in Syria and in Iraq and in many other countries, will be intensified in the campaign against anybody operating in Afghanistan that's planning or plotting attacks on so, the U.S. or any of the allies. But how is that counterterrorism going to operate? We're not going to have American special forces if we're just going to be relying on cyber and on intelligence and other no, ways. No, 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 no. The U.S. has conducted 15,000 targeted strikes on terrorists in a dozen countries in the past period since we've been in Afghanistan. So that's the campaign that will continue. And it'll actually become more intense in Afghanistan and possibly even in Pakistan, where that's been off limits as the Al Qaeda crowd have kept their their headquarters in Canada in uh, right. in Pakistan. But that has been off limits because the U.S. needed Pakistan as a line of supply for the troops that so, were in Afghanistan. Just before we finish, uh, Sina Saeed, um, uh, the last word with you. Have you spoken to people tonight? Are, are people that you know? planning other routes out of Afghanistan? Uh, yes, I've been in contact day and night since I came here. I, I only sleep two, two or three hours. I'm waking up whole night because of the time difference even. Uh, yes, they do. They they all think about uh, some of my friends. They are thinking about maybe of the 31st when they will go through Pakistan, and and most of them they are really willing and pushing very hard to come to this uh, this uh, before 31st. But I'm I'm really I want to raise this voice because of it was my uh, our all uh, most of Afghans they have complained regarding the British government uh, complaint that whenever even if they get in into these camps if they don't have even passport or something they reject them they take them out although they are legible people they they are work they work as a restaurants or they work for the uh, some kind of organizations or journalists they have been kicked out with their old mothers so uh, but but you can see if you, in in american side even if you don't have papers i have my own relative they didn't have papers they just went mm -hmm. in and now they are in the united states so mm -hmm. this difference shouldn't be there yeah. and everybody life is at risk Thank you all very much for joining us tonight.